Yo, what's up guys, it's Paz. Today I'm gonna be going over how you could split up your UTXOs to be prepared for runes. Now, just a warning, like everything, runes are a big gamble. Do it at your own risk. Just wanna put the educational content out there. I'll be going over how you could do this for both Xverse and Ord Wallet. And if you're wondering if I'm using Xverse or Ord Wallet, I'm actually using both. Honestly, just use what you want. I like Ord Wallet because it'll probably be the most reliable wallet that we could use. And I like Xverse because of its cool UI and its ease of use. But real quick, I wanna go through some questions questions that I've been getting asked on my previous video. The first one being the Bitcoin Core version that I run. Now, personally, I run Bitcoin Core version 24.0.1. I have so since February of last year. I haven't really had a need to upgrade and I'm probably gonna stick with it as long as you know there isn't a major change that makes me want to switch over. I have had some personal friends tell me that their download speeds are terrible on the later version. So I don't know if there's some kind of correlation there between the, the version number and download speeds but i guess maybe something to note when it comes to ord wallet i am always going to recommend to use the latest version this latest version fixed um a, a huge bug that they had definitely pay attention to the github in case any new updates come out because it could very well be possible that something new comes out that's going to be needed and you just don't want to miss out on that and another thing i wanted to bring up is in my last video i mentioned that you could add the dash dash index dash sats flag but i didn't really go too deep into it pretty much if you add the dash dash index dash sats flag before you you set up your index file it'll index all of the sats and it'll pretty much just allow you to inscribe on any sat that you want if you don't want that because maybe it takes up a lot of storage i think it's like a hundred extra gigabytes or something if you add dash dash index dash sats which makes the indexing process a whole lot longer definitely don't add the dash dash index dash sats flag and just have dash dash index dash runes and you'll be good to go it should just be a 30 gigabyte file Another thing that I didn't include in the video, but I did include in the description is a dash dash index flag. Pretty much it allows you to set your location path for your index file, which could be useful if you don't have enough space on your main hard drive, because by default, it'll save on your app data folder. And like I said, could be 30 to 130 plus gigabytes. So that's just another useful tip. And finally, I want to go over the shared delusion index. I didn't really go too deep into it, but the version you would download is index dash 0.18 without this without just means without sats as you can see up here it says all index files have inscriptions and runes indexed so all we need to do is open this one up and your screen may not look like this because i have like an, a built-in extension but pretty much you would just download the torrent file run the torrent file until you finish downloading and you, you could keep you know hosting it if you want once it actually finishes you just want to open up the zip file using either 7-zip or winrar whichever one and you simply want to go into your percent app data folder like I just did go into your ord folder and then you just drag in this file and you delete any old one that you have you just simply rename it index.redb that's how you replace it very simple I've talked about it in a previous video but I have been getting questions on it so could be you know hopefully useful for somebody so now here comes the fun part the educational part of the video let's talk about what UTXOs are so UTXOs stand for unspent transactions transaction outputs. If you have Bitcoin in your wallet, you have UTXOs. Whenever you're making a transaction, you're making new UTXOs. And an easy way to understand what UTXOs are is think of it like a pocket of change. So let's say you're sending from, from Coinbase to your Xverse wallet and you're sending over one Bitcoin. You're sending over one pocket of change that is worth one Bitcoin to your Xverse. And now your Xverse has one UTXO. So let's say you wanted to send out 0.5 Bitcoin to just a random address, right? Let's say you're sending it to your friend. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna use the one UTXO of one BTC in the transaction, and we're gonna send out 0.5 to your friend, and then we're gonna receive back any uh, change that's left. For, for this example, maybe let's say we get 0.499 BTC back. And that's because we're also gonna have like a small little fee down here for however much the Bitcoin transaction is gonna cost. So as you can see, we used one UTXO to send out 0.5 Bitcoin, and we received back the change of the, the one Bitcoin that we use and we spent some on fees. And you've pretty much created two UTXOs now. Your friend owns one UTXO and you own another UTXO. They're both different now, but the total amounts that you now have in your wallet is just one UTXO of 0.499 Bitcoin. Now I'm gonna round this back up to 0.5 because it's much easier, okay, for example's sake. And we're pretty much now going to create another scenario where a random person sends out 
buy Bitcoin to your X first. Well, now you have two UTXOs, one with a 0.25 Bitcoin. And think of these as like pockets of change, right? So now you have 0.25 BTC in one pocket and you still have the 0.5 BTC from uh, the previous transaction. Now, let's say you got to send over 0.6 Bitcoin from your X first. Well, now you have to combine both of these two UTXOs because none of them are at least 0.6. So you have to combine both of these two UTXOs and this is pretty much what the transaction is going to look like, you know, for example's sake. So the total amount that you're sending out is 0.75 Bitcoin, but 0.6 Bitcoin is going to go to your friend and then we're going to have 0.15 BTC or a little bit lower than that amount because we're accounting for fees as well being sent back to your X first wallet and then of course we have a fee however much it costs so for this transaction you need to use two UTXOs to even do the transaction so you might be wondering Paz how does this relate to runes okay that's all I want to know okay okay I got you one rune mint which I'll, I'll say RM is going to equal one UTXO you can only do one rune mint per transaction action or at least for now i don't know if that'll ever change i don't think so but for our example's sake we're only able to do one mint per one utxo so let's say you have a wallet that has one utxo of just one bitcoin well since you only have one utxo in your wallet you're only going to be able to submit one rune mint transaction and if we look at the blocks you can see that there is some time that you have to wait per block you know around 10 15 minutes sometimes even half an hour to an hour it rarely hits an hour but the point is you're going to have to wait each time because you're sending out your entire balance because that's just how the UTXO model works. You have to use whatever you have available to you. And if you only have one UTXO of one Bitcoin, it's going to use up the entire Bitcoin and send you back whatever the change amount is. It'll send it back to you, but you're not going to be able to use that Bitcoin until it comes back. There are ways to to use a Bitcoin that's coming back to you in, um, in other transactions, like child pays for parent transactions to speed up things but as of right now i don't think there's anything made that could allow you to just create more room mint transactions from your one utxo so what we need to do is split up this one btc that we have into several utxos and you might be wondering pass how much are fees gonna be and uh how much should i expect to you know spend per transaction my answer is i have no idea where we're just pretty much guessing what this is going to be like i'm anticipating maybe a thousand thousand sats per v by blocks which uh, could be costly if that's the case i hope that's not the case but considering that we've hit heights of like 500 to 600 sats per v by blocks in the past with brc20s it wouldn't be surprising if that is the case with runes but I do have something interesting that my fellow Ordecord moderator Jason said. He said one block holds under 4,500 rune mints if the entire block was just runes. So 45 UTXOs would snag 1% of all runes in a block. And then he recommends personally that most people will never need more than 20 to 40 UTXOs. And honestly, he's, he's probably right. He's probably right. Especially if your UTXOs have a large amount of Bitcoin in them. With rune mints, we probably won't see like an instant mint happen just like that when it comes to uh, a certain rune unless if the supply amount is just so low or the mint amount is like so close to the uh, supply yeah we we probably don't have to worry too much about a rune minting out immediately if it has good i guess tokenomics i'm gonna show you how you could actually calculate how much a transaction could roughly be just from the the mempool transaction screen alone as you can see here we have a few details one being size one being virtual size one being adjusted v size only one i really pay attention to is the virtual size we also have weight which is a interesting metric i only really focus on the virtual size when it comes to calculating out the fees real quick though if you want to understand this a little bit the size is the total size of the transaction accounting for like all inputs and outputs and a little bit of extra data virtual size is kind of like the size that's accounted for when it comes to how much a transaction will cost you might be wondering past how does this play out when it comes to the fees first off i need to convert this into actual bits so if we take 53.27 kilobytes to bits it's 53,270. and if we take this amount and we multiply it by the fee rate that we have you'll see which is one, which is crazy that we, uh, things used to be so cheap, man. But if we multiply by our fee rate, we'll have the total fee 
in sats. Taking that into account, I'm now going to go into an example rune transaction. So if you've been here for a while, you may remember something called rune alpha. It made its own version of runes, kind of following the docs in its own ways. I'm not too familiar with it, so don't quote me. Don't, don't ask me too many questions on it. I, I'm not even trying to recommend you to like even play with it. I'm just saying this used to exist or this does exist. And this is a transaction for what a rune mint looked like. So we come down here, we can see that the virtual size was 232 B bytes. And if we come up here and multiply it by the fee rate, it'll come out to 48,000. So let's just actually do the uh, the calculation just you know, for example sake. As you can see, not exact amount. I think we may be missing a, a hundredth number here because I it, it think it rounds down or up depending on it but roughly close to the amount of sats that it costs for the transaction to happen so taking this into account i'm now going to go over to a signet rune transaction as you can see here the virtual size is 172 i am going to take this virtual size and this virtual size into account and let's say we have it rounded towards 200 Right. If we're expecting fees to go as high as at least BRC 20s, let's do 700 for you know safety. We could expect each transaction to possibly be 140,000 sats. And if we take 140,000 sats and put it in, we could expect each transaction to roughly cost $91.53. Now, if you want to almost guarantee, I don't want I don't want to say the word guarantee because nothing is guaranteed. But if you want to get an almost guarantee of your mint going through, maybe you'll plan. For for the size to be 200 and you'll multiply it by a fee rate of a thousand. Well, now you need 200,000 sats per UTXO and you would be with $130 per transaction, per mint. You do your transactions how you want to do them. I am just simply showing examples of what you could do. And I'm basing all of this off of just previous rune transactions that I've shown as well as previous BRC20 fee rate amounts. So after all of that explanation, you might be wondering pass this is all great info but how do i actually split my utxos don't worry i got you so the first thing we're going to do is go through the x first setup if you're only using x first to mint rooms so we're gonna head to luminex.io and i'm gonna provide the links down below for each site make sure you verify before you click verify before you connect your address once everything is good to go you're connected you have the option to input the sats per outfit that you want to have now taking into to account what our friend Jason said. Maybe you want to do 140,000 sats per mint, but you want to do 280,000 sats within a UTXO. And you may say, why Why would I do this? Well, the more UTXOs you want to create, the more expensive it will be. And it's just because you're adding way more outputs. Yeah, it makes the size of a transaction larger. So for example here, if I wanted to do 10 UTXOs of 280,000, it's going to cost us 0. 0.000 Zero one seven BTC. But now let's say I want to do 140,000. Now it's going to cost us 0 0.00030186. So for my example, let's say I'm going to do a fee rate of 700 sats per V byte. And let's say I'm going to assume that the virtual size of the transaction is 200. So I want to do 140,000 sats per mint. But because I'm not going to send out all my mints at once, I just want to do two mint per UTXO. So I would do 280,000 sats within a UTXO. So, and in total, this is going to be 30 mints for me. After you uh, you adjust your gas fees, you just hit split, you make sure everything's right. You look at your inputs, your outputs, you're making sure everything's coming back to you and you only, you hit confirm. It gets sent out. You're good to go, pretty much. Very simple, very easy. So yeah, really awesome tool by Luminex. I think Xverse might actually create their own UTXO splitting tool. And something that I wish that Xverse does, if they do decide to put out a tool like this, is that they add the option to change the destination address. What I want to do is to be able to do this, but send it out to another address. Unfortunately, that is not possible with Luminex. So if you're using Ord Wallet, you would have to come over to Magisat.com io you'd connect your wallet you know make sure everything's safe head to your payment address for example sake i'm gonna use these two utxos that have a special set on them but you would click the top right hand corner and you would just hit the isolate tool at the bottom and because i had special sats in them it's gonna try to just split up the sats i'm gonna ignore that and we're gonna assume that you know you chose a utxo that had no special set on them they're just normal and it would look something like this so what you would want to do next is get 
get an ORD wallet address. How do you do this? Well, the shorthand command line for this is ORD wallet receive. Now this could be different depending if you need to locate your cookie file or your Bitcoin data directory, assuming that you already have a wallet created, which I went all over that in my previous video, but it should pop up with an address and you just simply copy the address, come back to magisat.io. Up here, we have a split button. And like I said, for example sake, I'm going to do 280,000 sats per UTXO for two mints per UTXO. I had split and now at the top here, as you can see, we are going to create a UTXO of 280,000. We come back down here, we hit split again. We do the same amount of Bitcoin we were gonna do. And we keep doing it and doing it while also making sure that the address down here below each UTXO is being sent to our ORD wallet address. Once you have all your UTXO set up, for me, I would, I guess I would do 15 UTXOs and then at the bottom, I would have one last UTXO that's just filled with change. What you would want to do, assuming that you want to send back the change back to your Xverse wallet, is make sure that the bottom UTXO is set to your Xverse payment address. You could also send it to your ORD wallet too, but it's, like I said, it's up to you. This is me just assuming that you want to send back the change back to your payment address. Once everything is set to go though, you double check, you're making sure you're sending it to your ORD wallet. You are making sure that your, your last UTXO is set up to where you're either receiving the change back to your X first, or I guess you're sending it out somewhere else. You want to come down here, set your fee rate to high. And I think because I was using a UTXO that had a special SAT, it didn't set up the fees correctly. But in case you need to set up the fees correctly, you just need to select another UTXO. But once everything is properly set up, you just want to come down here to the isolate button, hit isolate, and then you just go through your inputs, your outputs, you're making sure you're sending them to your actual address. You would hit confirm, your transaction would go through and you would have split up your UTXOs. Much simpler process compared to doing a Sparrow wallet guide. But yeah, that's pretty much going to be the entire tutorial. That's how you split up your UTXOs. That's how you're able to just fire out multiple mints for runes. I'll usually be on the Ordinal Faces Discord if you have any questions, so go join that. You can also join the Order Core Discord, which just has a bunch of cool, trusted tech help people. I've been saying this since BRC20s, but like with anything, this is a big gamble, so only put in what you are okay with losing. But hopefully you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching and have a good one.